My name is Victor Herman. My life was an unexpected one. Born an American, exiled in Siberia. But I survived. This is my story. I just made 60 cents. The Vigral? What, me? The Vigral? Me? Gamble? No. Oh, I was wondering. Uh, say it in Russian. I can't. Yeah, sure you can. Ya Vigral et the Nabigu. Ya Vigral. Ya Vigral et the Nabigu. Ya Vigral et the Nabigu. <laughs> you need to practice. Practice? Yeah. Well, oh, I don't want to practice. <laughs> you got to practice. Why? Because we're going to Russia. What? <laughs> Think I'm going to Russia? Russia? You're kidding me. No. What the moose told me yet, Felicia. All right. During the Depression, with millions unemployed, Henry Ford sold an automobile plant to the Soviet Union. With the machines went 300 families from Detroit, encouraged by my father. He had fled the Tsar 20 years before and now hoped to see his dream of brotherhood fulfilled. We who went with him had our own expectations, mine mainly of wolves and bears. My mother of infinitely greater terrors. Your mother doesn't want us to go to Russia. I've been, and most of the time I was there, I wanted to be somewhere else. What has Russia ever done for you, Sam Herman? For me? What has it done for me? You can ask me that question. All my life, I've been on one side. And that side hasn't often won. You know that, Rose. You know that as well as me. You did your share. There's plenty to do here. It's my country before this one, and I owe it. I owe it something. Three years is not a lifetime. You can stay here with Victor and Miriam. It's for me to do, Rose. And to tell you the truth, it might be a better way that I do it alone. I want to go. You know that's not how things are, Sam Herman. Families are not democracies any more than... When we finally arrived in Moscow, on our way to the factory at some place called Nizhny Novgorod, Stalin had decided to call it Gorky. Not that what Stalin did mattered to me in the slightest. After all, I did not feel I had left America. I thought, if I thought anything, that we were taking America with us. Three of hearts. Eight of diamonds. Queen of spades. Four of clubs. Nine of spades. Seven of diamonds. Six of clubs. Do you know how he does that? Jack of hearts. <laughs> 
I don't know. Why'd they do that? People worse off than us, Vic, I guess. There's no harm. No harm. Look like the guys are throwing rocks at us. Uh, they'd be kulaks. A kulak? What's a kulak? Well, they're farmers who have a little more than average. Not anymore, they haven't. They've been collectivized. That's their idea of a political protest, chucking rocks at trains. There's a factory back there. Boy, I'm sure glad to see you guys in Gorky. We got a quarter to meet. That's a joke. These whiskeys don't know a wrench from a ratchet. How do you get on with them? There's people, I mean. Oh, they're people, all right. Some of them good. As soon as you get settled, come on over to the mess hall, and we'll get you some food and some answers to your questions. There's not much of either, I'm afraid, so don't expect too much. Second floor to the left. Thank you very much. I hear you got a running track here. Yeah. You interested in sport? Yeah. Listen, let me give you a tip. You do good at sport, and you get more of everything. More food, more clothing, more free time, and more fun. And believe me, the last is the most important. Yeah? How long have you been here? Too long. And you know, there's one thing about this place. It makes you appreciate Detroit. Yeah. Well, he was right, that fella, about everything. Gorky did make me appreciate Detroit, and sports gave me food and free time and fun for I knew nothing save being young and strong and alive. And I ran towards my future as though it was trying to escape me, which was not so. How'd I do? You can do better. Keep yourself warm. Don't give your heat to the wind. What was my time? You don't need to know. Get yourself dressed, Herman. I bet you lost count. See, you're supposed to say Mississippi between the numbers. Yeah. You're a great athlete, Victor. It's a great gift. It's what I like to do. I also like to compete. When I was your age, the competition was against the enemies of the people. What age are you? Two years younger than your father. Have you considered your future, Victor? Where will you make your home? <laughs> well, my father's got to stay in Russia for three years, and then we go back to the States. The reason that I ask is that you would do well to consider becoming a Russian citizen. It would assure you a fine athletic education. I don't want to give up being an American. No, no, of course you wouldn't. But if you were to consider the question, then I might feel encouraged to extend you the fullest help with your athletic career. I might consider it. Good. That's good. It's the same as anywhere else. I mean, he says he'll help me out if I play his game. You don't understand Russians, Victor. Comrade Chernoff is dedicated to making Gorky the finest athletic team possible. Then how come the whole of the boxing team don't have to do any work might hurt their hands? I'm not complaining, I'm just saying it's like everywhere else. You're wrong, Victor. It's not like anywhere else. This country is doing what no other nation has ever attempted to do before. The revolution is not yet as old as you are. And in that time, they've made strides. It would have taken normally 100, 150 years. They're compressing history. Rose. 
was. What's wrong? Are you all right, Rose? The wind. Don't you hear it? The wind? No, it's not windy. I heard it. You hear the wind? Yes, Victor. It's very cold. You must wear warm things. Promise me. Sure. I will. I promise. Moscow than in Gorky, eh, hey, Victor? It sure is. <laughs> I suppose you have to join the army to get to use the sports facilities. <laughs> there is always a catch, eh, hey, American? Well, you don't get something for nothing, eh, hey, General? Only your life. That is given to you freely. And we must not be miserly with it. There is a school for flying near you, near Gorky. You know of it, American? Sure. <laughs> you can call me Comrade. <laughs> it is for Russians. And you wish to be what you are. Is that not so? That's right. That is as it should be. Also there, they train parachute jumpers. To fly a plane, you should be Russian to jump out of it. It is not necessary. You see, this also is a country of opportunity, American. Yeah, but why would I want to jump out of an airplane? In order to land safely. Also, it would enable you to use those fine army facilities to train. And who knows, in time, it may lead to other things. Like skywriting. Skywriting? Messages in smoke in the sky. Ah. You mean politics. <laughs> yeah. General Tuchachevsky. You know who he is, Victor? Yeah, he's a pretty big wheel. He's a hero of the Soviet Republic. A great soldier. And one of the most important men in the party. And he was talking to you like a son. Oh, thanks. Your mother's not going to be too happy about you jumping out of planes. She still gets those psalms in her head. At night, it wakes her up. She should see somebody. Or she could go home and rest. We're going to be going back soon. She'd never do it. Anyway, we're all on the same passport. Mean a lot of red tape. When the summer comes, she'll feel better. And I suppose she did, in a way. The noise was a tumor, growing louder and louder in her head till it silenced everything else. By the time she died, I was a sky jumper, and I was far away from her, high above the earth, seeing everything small and remote. Her death was like that. No matter how I tried, I couldn't get close enough. 